Office 2010 Data Validation Techniques. It's important to control or specify what kind of data is entered into your database. And there are various techniques that can be used. Firstly, I'm going to use it something called a lookup wizard or a lookup list. So let's go to gender, for instance. Okay, let's go to our data type and select lookup wizard. Um, you're going to select that I will type in the values that I want. Okay, we're going to give them two options to choose from. F for female or M for male. Right, and we're going to just leave our label as gender and we're going to select finish. Now you won't see the end result here. You'll only see it in your data sheet view. But if you were to select look up over here, you'll see that there's your row source F or M that they can choose from. Okay. Right, the second technique that you can use is something called an input mask. Okay, so here you can say, I want to see an uppercase alphabetical letter. So uppercase would be the greater than sign and an alphabetical letter would be a capital L. There's a whole list of codes that you can use uh, for your input masks. Uh, be sure to study those lists carefully. You can also add a validation rule. So here where it says validation rule, you can say that uh, they must type in F or M. And you can give it some text. So if they attempt to type in something else like V or N or L or something, uh, you can add validation text that could say you may only enter F or M. Okay, so that's your validation rule. And your validation rule goes hand in hand with your validation text. You must always give the user some kind of message to um, try and guide them as to what they need to type in. Some other techniques that you could use in terms of data validation is to assign a primary key. Now remember, a primary key is used to um, assign a unique value to each record. And in this case, uh, the unique value would be our member ID. So to assign the primary key, select the field, right click next to the field and select primary key. You can also ensure that you choose the appropriate data type. Uh, so for instance, if you had a date, um, let's say you had a date of birth field over here, the most appropriate data type would not be text or memo or number, it would in fact be date or time. So they can also help with data validation. You can also change the field size. So let's get back to gender again. Uh, you'll see that the default field size is 255 and they will only be required to type in one character. So you can change your field size to one and that will allow the user to only insert one character. And one other technique that you can use is to actually make your field a compulsory field if, if it's information that you really need to get from the user. So where it says required, you can change that to yes, and that won't allow the user to move on to the next uh, field until they've inserted some kind of value into that specific uh, field.